but the messages that, that you guys are putting across, the way that you, you're looking to develop the game intelligence of the players, the way that you're approaching about it, is you're not going to get every player no, no. to be a good player. That's no. not going to work. No. Right? Some of them will improve. And some of those players will just be, they will be there to provide a platform for some of the other players to really? push on. Of course. And the information you're giving, you'll be surprised at the, how the more intelligent players will go away and think about this now. Mm. And they will think about implementing that. They will watch games in a different way. Right? And they will develop as players. But they're never going to get the pictures in your head if you just talk to them. They have to see it. And we all have to see it. You know, when we were players, you know, it was no good Mick coaching me no. and telling me, I want you to do that, Mike, and do that, and do that, and do that. Because after a couple of minutes, I'd get bored. Mm. It'd be like that. But once somebody said, if the ball goes out there, and there's the goal, now, if you time your run on his touch and get in there, and time your run to get in the box to try and finish, right, and you end up there as the ball comes in, watch, go and try it, then I, ah, I've got it now. Mm. I've got it. And suddenly it changed my little things like that changed my game when I was coached. Mm. You know, it's like you as a centre half, if if you were constantly getting I remember when Yap Stam first came to England, you know, very good Dutch defender, playing at Manchester United. And because in Holland he had had a sweeper behind him all the time, he was always too tight with players. Mm. Mm. And in the charity shield or in the early game, people were rolling him and running in there and he was getting caught. And it took somebody just to work, say to him, look, okay, yeah, look, don't get so tight, come here, mm. right, and give yourself that space. And when the ball's knocked in there, you'll win the race. But if it goes to feet, mm. you can go tight. Yeah. Right? But, and once he got it, he became a top, top good. defender. Mm. But somebody had to show him that, and the way you show him is put the ball there. Yeah. And say, look, yeah, if the ball gets knocked in there, can you see that you're going to win that race? Mm. Yeah. He buys into it. Yeah. The player buys into it, he understands why he's doing that and how he's going to do it. And that's, that's really it, isn't it? That's of course, that's all it is. That's all it is. Giving them good pictures. Yeah. And they've come on a bump from what they Massive. were earlier. And you've got great material to work with. Oh, of course. Because the players are very responsive. Yeah. You know, they're very bright, they're very intelligent, and they want to learn. What, you know, what great material to work with. Well, that's what we've said now. We've had them six months. Yeah. And we can see the improvement all the way. Yeah. But the question I ask the players, in a uh, little bit of a recess. Has, have the coaches improved? Yeah, yeah. Why? Because we're getting good pictures, good instruction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, what, today? Oh yeah. no, it's been better. Yeah, yeah, all the way. You through. know, and that's a good feedback from, yeah. from the player. Yeah. Because if they don't think they're learning anything, they just cut off. Yeah. And it's difficult to yeah. motivate a good player then, yeah. because he'll think for himself. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know? And that's good feedback for you coaches. Yeah. I think, I think the other thing, and you made the point where, Sometimes when you, when you get a group of players together and you ask them questions, any group of players or any group in any form of environment, if you ask questions, the group pressure not to answer that question is, there? is quite intense. Mm. So you think about it in football. So instead of trying to battle that, you're far better to ask the questions on the football field with the ball rolling. Mm. Yeah. So you have the ball rolling and the ball's gone from, say, the situation in the game yeah. there, the ball's gone from over there to the left side. And then you might ask the questions of the centre defenders. As that ball's gone there, what are you going to do now? Show me. And the players would respond. Brilliant. How else? Right, so as they go over, the left back, you might say to the left back, because it was a situation where the ball got switched, we watched it, mm -hmm. where the left back got caught like this. So you might say in that situation, great, left back, how else, right, in this situation, where's the danger for you? And it's the leading question. And he might say, well, the danger is in there. Okay, well, great, you can see that in there. Where else is the danger? Okay, so what can you do with your body position so you can see the ball and that player that you're not doing at the moment? Good, that's what we're looking for you to do. And he's answered the questions himself, right? And that's a much more powerful way of the player self-learning than being told, Open your body, open your body, because he might not know why he's opening his body. But if he's answering the question himself through the direction that you're giving him, then it, he's much more aware in a game, and suddenly you'll start to, see, start to see the players doing that as they recover, because they will naturally think for themselves. That as an example.
and it's constant. You know, it's a drip, 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 drip process. Mm. With players, they're not going to get it every time, and you constantly drip, drip, drip. And I think you're doing a great job. For what I've yeah. seen, I think, and, and the response of the players in the two games, not always successful, but you saw little examples where you've got three or four players turning out, and you've got three or four passes where you where you could see in that session they were trying to suck them on for short Quite passes to then go long. Mm. And a couple of times the ball got intercepted, right? But that's okay because they were trying to thread it through at the right time. They were trying to take the risk at the right time and they were aware. And you could see the other players pulling away so the ball could... And I'm looking at it going, the players are trying here. Mm. They're trying to get it. They're trying to stay, understand what they're trying to do much more. Right? And eventually get a bit more success. If you wanted, if you looked at it and said, okay, well, we want to, to develop the confidence of the players, we want more success. Okay? What you might have done is just made the pitch a bit bigger. Yeah. To start with, to make the pitch a bit bigger, so that they had a little bit more time and a little bit more success. Right? And then built upon that success. And then afterwards, mm -hmm. and said, right, okay, now we're going to start to bring the pitch in mm -hmm. because you've done really well. You've had that little bit more time. We've put across the coaching messages. Fantastic. Now let's challenge you. Now let's bring the pitch in and see what you like with the pitch smaller. And the players like that kind of challenge, don't they? No, they do, I. You know, so sometimes, and I noticed last night, the, the session last night with the under 12s, I, I thought, I said to the, the coach, I thought the pitch was too small for the numbers. So therefore, the players weren't really getting that success. The confidence. Yeah, and, and mm, success yeah. brings confidence. And if conf yeah. what does confidence bring? better performance because yeah. they believe in it right and it's just a thought sometimes start there get the confidence and then challenge them by bringing it in and challenge them by bringing it in mm. rather than the other way around it's just a thought for you yeah. mm. yep. good thought you know sometimes i think mate, we, what we do is we kind of put the challenge to the players a little bit too quickly right and if we think about just the psychology of, of football okay us as players, okay, when we played at our best was when we were confident. Because we believed then totally in what we were doing, we were confident. When we were winning and we were playing well, we had the confidence. When we struggled was when we were losing, right, and we were scrabbling. Mm. So if you kind of think, well, we want to develop players, and this is what this is about as an academy developing players, then what you need to do is to, as much as you can to, to develop their confidence. Mm. And what brings confidence? Success. Right? Not winning, necessarily, but success in performance. Mm. Right? And through your coaching, once they get that success, then you can challenge them. And then you'll start finding out those players that can rise to the challenge and those that get dropped behind. And it's a great way as well, Mick, of levelling them out a bit so that the ones that aren't yeah. so good, they can get a degree of success in, in the session. Because mm. sometimes, for a few, the session was too much for them. Not mm. so much today, but I thought last night with the, oh, with the younger with groups. With the small ones. Yeah. yeah, the session was too much yeah. for them. There was a few that were kind of really struggling to get a touch. Yeah. And, and if, the, if you analysed it, and when you went away and you analysed how many successful passes some of them mm. had, it was very few. Mm. Whereas you want them to go away with that nice feeling of, you need to go, don't you? Yeah, I yeah. Don't. Right, mm. that, that do. <laughs> okay. Good. Thanks. Thank you.